Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about working with our VCM scanner and our MAF calibration process. So in the last video, we learned about our mass airflow sensor calibration curves and all the details along with that. Now we're gonna take a look at using our short and long-term fuel trims in our closed loop operation to guide us in tuning our mass airflow sensor curve at idle and part throttle. We're gonna use our VCM scanner, create a custom histogram, grab a bunch of data when we do our idle and part throttle driving, go back in and make our changes. It's an incredibly simple process. I'm gonna be walking you through every detail you need to know in this video. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. All right, so let's get started here. We're gonna be taking a look at using our VCM scanner to analyze tuning our mass airflow sensor. It's gonna be a really simple process. I'm gonna be going through that with this vehicle. So the first thing we're gonna be starting off with, if this is a 2012 Yukon Denali, we're gonna be using in this example. And we're gonna find that this vehicle has an engine cold air intake that's been installed onto it. So we need to do a MAF recalibration process. It's actually really, really easy. And we're gonna be using our VCM scanner to tell us what changes we need to make, then move back into our VCM editor side of things and make those changes. And I'll go through the process of tuning the idle and part throttle for the mass airflow sensor curve. So I did a read on the vehicle. This is gonna be the original file that I've read out of this particular vehicle. If we jump in here to engine, we go in here to airflow into general, we can see the MAF calibration, airflow versus frequency. This will be the stock MAF calibration curve that we are gonna be working with. And if we jump in here, we can take a look that it's a nice smooth progressive line here. And this is gonna be the stock calibration again from GM. So we've installed this intake, it's gonna be throwing off the calibration just a little bit. So we need to go back in and clean things up. So let's close this, let's jump into our VCM scanner. So jumping in here to our scanner, we're gonna find here that we need to go and read the vehicle. Now, we did this already when we took a look at our closed loop trims, and in fact, here on my scanner, it's recognizing this as a 2012 G GMC Yukon Denali. However, we're gonna to wanna to do this again so we can generate a custom channels list for this vehicle. So you're making model, it's gonna be very specific, and we can see a lot of what we're logging in here are SAE channels. Now, we did add in the closed loop video our wideband and the commanded air fuel we're gonna be using these to guide us in doing some of our tuning here. Um, I'm gonna be showing you that. Specifically, we're gonna be taking a look at our O2 switching voltages versus our airflow in pound per minute, and making sure that our air fuel, when we're driving part throttle, is going to be targeting where we want it to be at. Now, we talked about that in that last video for closed loop operation. We're gonna take a little bit more specific look at it here. It's gonna be part of doing the mass airflow calibration. We don't have to do it, we can skip it, but it's gonna be making sure that when our closed loop trims are applying the short and long term trims and focusing around that target of 14.5, 14.7 air fuel at idle and part throttle, that our wideband is gonna be showing us and backing that up. If we see that our wideband's different, 